Good morning. It's such an honor and pleasure to be here today. And I want to say thank you to the entire Warren team and Google for sponsoring this. My research assistant, Kimberly Fazio, as well as Accenture for supporting this research. So today what I want to share with you is my research journey I've been on for the last four to five years, really studying the future workforce. And for me, what, I really, what keeps me up at night is what's going to happen to our middle management function in the future of work. There's three trends that I see emerging within the research and data that is causing us to rethink through the role of management in the future of work. The first, automation is coming, and I would also argue is likely here in many of your organizations today. So what does that mean? The World Economic Forum suggests that 36% of jobs are likely to be disrupted, not necessarily displaced, but disrupted. And you know where we're anticipating to see much of that disruption? Within our middle management function. They carry a lot of the administrative burden within organizations, and a lot of that is becoming automated. And so the question is, what does that role begin to look like in the future? The second thing, for those of you that are working in matrix organizations or complex large organizations, managers are increasingly being asked to play this coach player role, player coach role, as they call it organizations. We're seeing learning and development, performance management, really being pushed away from formalized siloed HR functions and really down to the job and the role of middle managers being asked to do that. And on top of all of that, I had dinner a couple weeks ago with the CEO of Gallup, and he's coming out with a new book to explain his research that shows that employee engagement, 70% of the variance comes from the manager. And so the book's gonna be called It's, it's the Manager. And so managers are feeling the heat when it comes to employee engagement. And those of you that are still doing annual employee engagement surveys know those conversations that take place with your managers trying to figure out how can they increase their effectiveness as well as engagement. So this is the research that I've been engaged on that, like I said, that keeps me up at night, is how can we take these highly technical, trained managers and pivot them to become developers of people within your organization? And so within my particular context that I had the privilege to study, is the finance function was getting ready to install robotic process automation. It was a back office function. These managers were trained in efficient, routine, as well as accurate you know, measurements. And what I wanted to do, we didn't want to do layoffs, and so what we wanted to do is pivot those roles to become more creative, engaging stakeholders. We wanted them to be creative thinkers. We wanted them to be proactive. And so not only that, we also wanted them to do that with their teams. We wanted them to show the way and really make this pivot. So the question I have for you today is, how can we train highly technical managers to pivot to become developers of people within organizations? So how did I go about trying to figure this out? There was a four process methodology. The very first, and I'm a big believer as a researcher in mixed methods, is really trying to understand the context. We, a lot of times in HR, we throw out words such as effective management, employee engagement. And those of you that might have had the privilege to see Marcus Buckingham yesterday say, it's really, we have to learn how to operationalize and measure that and bring some scientific study to that. And so my birding platform at that time was, what does effective management look like in this particular context? To do that, I interviewed 30 of the highest performing managers. We were able to look back at the performance reviews and really determine what is it that you do to engage employees? We interviewed their employees. What is it these managers do? How do they behave? How do you know that they care about their well-being? And I'll share with you in the next slide some of those findings that we found. The second thing is I started to see within the data emerge this notion of growth mindsets. You know, we kept hearing from employees, managers that were effective enabled my growth. They really focused on learning. They allowed me to take mistakes. And so before really engaging in any sort of intervention, I wanted to first determine, is there a relationship between growth mindsets and an effective management? And we found enough hypo you know, hypo hypothesis and support to prove that. And so it made sense for us to make the investment into the intervention. And so the third thing, which was a beautiful thing as a researcher that doesn't happen every day, is I was able to conduct a field experiment. And this group that I'm talking about was about 450 managers. And they were split up in the East Coast, West Coast, and then the Midwest. And so we were really able to isolate each of these regions, making the East Coast the control group, the Midwest, as well as the West Coast, two different interventions, which I'll talk about in the next slide, and really begin to test the impact that our interventions would have across the group. And then the last thing that I think is really important, especially those of us in more of the social science, is we're studying employees. And so at the end of the day, this is about continuing to increase the value and dignity of human work. And the best way to do that is by engaging employees along the process, not staying separated from them, not just necessarily getting lost in spreadsheets, but really having this be part of a co-creation in order to create more effective management in our workplaces. 
So I'm excited to share with you what we found. What is effective management? And so what we found was a statement. Effective managers are growth-oriented experts. They lend their time. Time was a big theme that we saw within the data. To guide an employee's growth, help navigate through the organization by removing barriers, being supportive and transparent even when it's difficult. So this is what we found for effective management within this particular context. And I encourage any of you who's interested in maybe replicating this study to see if that works in other contexts to come talk at the coffee break. But what was most important about this was not just defining the construct, but was really creating a new narrative for this entire function to understand a story of here's what effective management looks like. It really created a sense of consistency and ability for managers to create accountability amongst each other to know that they were all being measured against the same thing. And then we continued to test this or created a scale um, around effective management and continued to test, are these behaviors indeed related to growth mindset activities? And we continue to find this support. But the, I think probably one of the most exciting parts was about the actual interventions itself. And so what we did is uh, one group in terms of our intervention, we did mindset training, four hour training, and um, really thought by bringing awareness to managers, these are the type of learning behaviors. We trained on the effective management statement and really were sharing a lot of the data that we were collecting to help make the case. But we know, those of you in the L&D profession, profession know that training alone is not enough. And so being able to use from nudge theory, and excited to hear from uh, Richard Thaler later this afternoon, we were able to design what I, I called a Mindset Monday campaign. So for 12 weeks, managers received in their inbox a Mindset Monday, and at first, as a researcher, I wanted to make the case for why they needed to change, but we heard back uh, from feedback saying, you know what, I don't have time to learn the theoretical underpinnings of why growth mindsets you know, work, just tell me what to do. You know? And so we became really simplified in terms of, hey, go take your team out to lunch this week. You know, discuss, you know, what, what, what's their favorite movie? What do they like? Get to know your employees better. Do you understand your employees' development? And so we were really pretty prescriptive around that. And as you can see from the first bar graph here, we, we, we were very excited to see the results. The second group, though, is, you know, again, drawing more from social learning theory. I suspected that nudging might work, but we might need to do something even more hands-on. And so really pulling from social learning theory, understanding that we learn best when we're with each other from peer groups and not necessarily a top-down initiative, as well as that you know, social support and accountability that forms. And so what we did within the um, West Coast region was create these peer accountability groups where they were able to share in a psychologically safe environment the struggles they were having trying to make this pivot, learn firsthand from their peers what was working, what wasn't. And um, you know, I was shocked when the HR business partner called me when they got that you know, annual managerial effectiveness scores and I was so worried we're gonna either stay neutral or go in the wrong direction. You never know when you're doing field experiments, you know, unintended consequences. And was thrilled that this group was now the leading example within the entire function of how to become an effective manager. So what do we learn and what, what does this mean you know, for your organizations today? One, Really being able to bring data science, people analytics, behavioral science to the equation allows us to capture the nuances that occur when we start talking about constructs such as managerial effectiveness and employee engagement. One of the things, the point number two here is that this data allows you to pivot quickly within your own organization. And as we learn, as you can see here, I know these numbers are pretty small, mindsets actually didn't matter as much in terms of predicting whether or not a manager was gonna be perceived as uh, effective. Instead, what we saw as we started to make a more complex model around managerial effectiveness was that self-efficacy was one of the most important belief systems that managers have. Whether or not they believe they can navigate the environment, whether they believe they could create positive outcomes for their employees. And so we had to start looking at some of the environmental barriers that were getting in the way for our managers. Here's what else we learned. You know, I strongly believe in a digital age Human management is needed, much like Google's Project Oxygen found. You know, sometimes there's a sentiment, do we really need these middle managers? You know, are they creating value? And so what I found from the research is, especially once we created these collaborative peer learning um, journeys, middle management is very much needed. What I heard from employees is that they're craving um, pri you know, priorities. What, what do I do? How do I navigate? There's so much complexity coming at me. There's fire drills every day. Where do I go for help? And they're increasingly looking to their middle manager, whether that's through a digital environment or in person, to help provide that clarity. And so today, I'm here to say that middle managers are very much needed. I think they're the lifeblood of the organization. And so in the end, what does, where does this all lead to? Mindsets certainly matter. Growth mindsets are important, and I think it's very important to have, you know, hire as much as possible and infuse a growth mindset culture. 
But I think what's even more important is attitudes and context. And so what I would like to say is I know today, a lot of times, you know, I would came with the assumption that maybe some managers don't want to be effective. You saw the data, only 50% were being perceived as effective. But that wasn't the case. Nine out of 10 managers want to be effective, but they need an intentional roadmap on how to pivot and become developers of people. This isn't necessarily something that people just are going to jump into these roles and know how to do. And much like how we train for technical skills and we treat engineers and we give them the you know, mathematical equations to be successful, when it comes to people development, we have to have our managers learn and train and really as an organization put intentional effort to make managers developers of people. Thank you so much for your time and I wish you the best of luck in your organizations.